Tommy. Yeah, How do you do it?
my name. It says the Lord, I am there among them. Well, the first thing I'd like to do this morning is welcome everybody here for this very special day and it's an important time for everybody here in the few front seats. Why? What are they going to do? What are they going to do? You're going to make your first Holy Communion. Hmm? What's that? Today. Yeah, now. Well, I'd like to welcome you, and I'd like to welcome everybody who's come with you. The people who love you, and the people who look after you. Aren't you very good? Yeah. Why are they very good? Well, they are very good. And that's why we're gathered here today. Because we believe, and the people who brought you here, and the reason we gather here is we believe that God is very good too. We don't, sometimes we forget about God, but today is the day when we just think about him a little more than usual. He's very good, and all your life, God, or Jesus, will always be your special friend. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. But if we gather in that spirit, in that we've come together in faith this morning, and these children were baptized only a few years ago, and today another thing happened in their Christian life, which we believe, if it's important to us, and if we live it out, it helps us in our lives. There's, al there's always times when we as adults maybe shut our eyes and wonder about how things are, or say a prayer, especially when something terrible happens. And that's really, that's when God is important to us, on the great days and on the very sad days. And that's what we're trying, teachers, parents, everybody, we're trying to hand on to the children. And that's what's going to happen today. Got something else that's going to happen here today that shows that God loves you. Okay? We'll talk a little in a while, and I'd like to invite everybody just to enjoy the next while. It's a lovely day outside, and it's a lovely day inside in the church. And so maybe in our hearts, for just a moment, you here and everybody else, we'll just ask God to help us in our lives, in a quiet moment. And maybe you say a prayer for yourself and for everybody else. You do that now. Just for a minute. Okay. Most of the time, we hope we'll be happy. There are times when we become sad because we might have done something that's wrong. And now we ask for this. <coughs>
Let us pray for our first communicants. God our Father, you are indeed our Father. You watch over us with gentle care. We, who are your people, today joyfully present these boys and girls for their first Holy Communion. We pray that in the years ahead, they may often return to be nourished and fed at the Lord's table. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Thank <laughs> you. 
happened at the last supper. On the night before he died, the Lord Jesus took bread. He spoke the prayer of thanks over the bread and said, This is my body. Then he shared it with them. In the same way, he took the chalice filled with wine and said, This chalice of wine is the new covenant in my blood. Then he shared the chalice of wine with them and said to them, Have this supper again in my memory. This is the word of the Lord. Okay. 
to give one more piece. We told the ducks down there. Oh, this is ordinary, it's good bread, it's a loaf of bread, okay? And when Jesus was with his friends, you know the way when people are at home, they sit down and they have a cup of tea and a biscuit or something? Do they do that in your house? Well, when Jesus was with his friends in another country, which is far from here, they used to take bread like this, just like this, and bread, they had no knives, so they broke it like this, and they had it with some wine, which is up there, okay? Can you follow me? That's the way they used to have tea and biscuits, was a bit of bread and a bit of wine, okay? This is bread, just ordinary bread, okay? There's something different. It's hard to understand, so not going to try and understand it, and anybody who says they understand it, doesn't really know what to talk about. What happens? What's going to happen? This, the bread you've eaten here is very different from the bread you're going to get when you come up here. It's, it's the same stuff, it's flour and water, but it, it's going to be different. What's going to be different about it? That's, it's, that's, it, that's everything. It's Jesus' body. It's, it's like bread, it looks like bread, it tastes like bread, but it's Jesus' body. Now that's impossible to understand even if you're 77 or 87. It's a very, anybody who thinks they understand that, they, we can't understand it. But Jesus told us that when we come together and we do this thing in memory of him, when we eat this bread, that he's in it. It's impossible to understand, but that's what First Communion and what having, that's what having communion is about. And you don't have to understand it. We don't have to. We just have to know it because it helps us. If you're sad or if you're happy, all through your life, and right now too, there will be times when it would be nice to know that Jesus is there, okay? When you're happy or you're sad, and to come to communion, even though you don't understand it, and even though there's lots of people who think it's ridiculous, and this is slightly ridiculous, but that's like, you don't, it's like, it's like anything that's important. It's sometimes, it's, you don't find it, yeah. It, it's the body. If this is ordinary bread, what you're going to get in a few minutes' time, is going to be the body of Christ, and the difference is that Jesus is in it. It tastes the same, it looks the same. Why, does he, why do you receive communion? Why are you going to do it? Because it helps us. It helps you, and it helps everybody else here. We don't know how it helps us, but it does help us. Because God, God's in our hearts and in our heads, and as I say, when we're happy or we're sad, or when there's somebody in trouble, if we close our eyes, or kneel down, or however we do it, and turn to God and ask his help, he will help us. And the reason we have communion is that, you know, if you look at a photograph, you know when somebody's awake, well, everybody here, when somebody's away from you and you look at a photograph, it brings them to mind. And that's really what Holy Communion is. It's just to call to mind and to do it in memory of Jesus, who we don't see. We don't see, but we know he's there because of the way other people love us and because of the way we get on together. So loving God and loving our neighbor. We know Jesus is there. And the communion is like a photograph. It's more, it's like a photograph. It, 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 something, something happens in our heads. We, we realize something happening. And it's God who's come into us and will help us out. Is that, is that sensible? Okay, somebody else gets one more piece of bread for this one. <laughs> we go. Oh dear me. I leave these here and come to take them away later. Okay? But that's, it's ordinary bread, and what's going to happen now in a few minutes, it's, a dip, it's the same, it looks the same, it's flour and water, but God's there, and it's like a photograph, it, it helps us to call God's mind. Okay? Does that make sense to anybody else? <laughs> it's very hard to explain something that's very complicated and that we really don't understand especially to children, but it, it does help us all. Some of us believe, some of us don't, but that's what the idea of communion always was. In the Protestant or the Catholic churches, when we come together, it calls to mind the God that we can't see in three sorts of ways, in what happens on the altar, in the people who are gathered together, and in what's done on the altar. There's three things that happen. We gather, we hear the spoken word, and we, something happens on the altar and communion is given. And so that's, where, that's why we gather every Sunday and that's why we're gathered here today and we're passing this on to these children in what they've already been told, in what they've already experienced, most especially in love. 
It's only when we're loved that we can understand God. People who aren't loved, and that includes all of us a lot of the time, when things fall apart or when someone goes away or whatever, we don't feel loved. And it's very hard to understand God when you don't feel loved or when you aren't loved. And that's why it's important for all these children who look so well and healthy and have happy faces. We hope that as they've been loved, they will always be loved. Because that's the only way that they'll ever know God, as with ourselves. If we've had bad experiences in life, it warps our image of God, and we all have those. But to come back all the time to the way God really is, and that's the God's love, and to teach us how to live, which is what we want to hand on to everybody who's around us. And so we go ahead now. That bread there is ordinary bread, and what will happen? The bread there is ordinary bread, and that we got it right in one. What happens now is we get the body of Jesus which is a funny thing to say, but it calls to mind the God that we can't see, who's in our hearts and in our heads and shows us how to live. Okay? Anybody like to say anything? Anything on anybody's mind here? No? Okay, we'll wait for that. Okay. Father, you have given us your word that you will not be far, given your word that you will not be far from those who call upon you in prayer. In faith and hope and love, we ask you now to graciously hear us. God, our Father, you have asked that love for our little children, bless all children everywhere, bless especially the children in this parish who are making their first holy communion today may we all live as jesus taught us lord hear us lord graciously hear us dear jesus how do you forgive us our parents who are so good to us be with them all to keep that in your loving care lord hear us
spread and beautiful world. With Jesus we sing your praise. Because you love us, you sent Jesus your Son to bring us to you and to gather us around him as the children of one family. With Jesus we sing your praise. Glory to God in the He took bread and gave you thanks and praise. Then he broke the bread, he gave it to his friends and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. took the cup that was filled with wine. He thanked you, Father, gave it to his friends, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be a shed for you and for all people, so that sins will always be forgiven. So, loving Father, we remember that Jesus died and rose again to save the world. He put himself into our hands to be a sacrifice we offer you. Lord our God, listen to our prayer. Send the Holy Spirit to all of us who share in this meal, and may this Spirit bring us closer in the family of the Church, with people everywhere in our world, with John Paul, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, Jerry, the system, and all who love and serve your people, whatever their role in life. Remember, Father, our families and friends. Maybe in a moment of silence we think of our families and our friends, those we do not love as we should. Remember those who have died, we pray now for anybody we know who has died in our families. Bring them home to you to be with you forever. Praise you, we bless you, we thank you. Gather us all together into your kingdom. There we shall be happy forever with Mary, the mother of God, our mother. There all our friends and those of Jesus the Lord will sing a song of joy. Praise you, we bless you, we thank you. To him we give in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father.
Jesus was among us, his friends or his disciples asked him how they should pray or how they should talk to him when he was gone. And he gave them these words, and so we say them together. Our Father, who art in heaven,